Welcome. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a simple Mahota page for determining a good time for some project. So once you've got the data for a person, you've entered it here, then we're going to click OK plus transit. Now OK plus transit means that we'll load the chart of the person and at the same time we'll load a secondary chart which is one of these locations. I've got a lot here. But you can easily create a new location with this button that we're using Los Angeles, <clears throat> just for an example. So this is the, the chart and we see that there is uh, Los Angeles here. This is the, what we call the native two and this is the primary. This is the person. And this is the main part of the Mohota analysis, the Panchanga Mohota graph. Now the Panchanga Mohota graph shows many different things that are changing throughout the day based mainly on the positions of the sun and the moon. And this enables us to see when we have a good time. And this is using what I call the traffic uh, color coding scheme because after all we all understand it, red is for the less positive energies, green for the very positive energies and orange for the okay in the middle sort of neutral energies. This uh, graph here can be either for a day or a week or a month. When you go up to a month the horrors disappear because they're just too many of them in a day. And it's good to start with the month because, you know, when you initially start, you want to have an overview. It's, it's restricted to the maximum of a month for this particular graph. Some of the others go up to years, but this graph is restricted to a month because as you see, there are so many, you know, so much detail. And if you went to, to multiple months, then it would be very hard to see what's going on. And it's extremely easy to move month to month. So if somebody says, OK, I have to go somewhere in August, then we put up the August month. And then they say, no, maybe September. Then moving to September is very easy, I'll show you. We, uh, we will start with this. And then down here, this is just an example page. We have the chart of the, the natal chart of the person. So we have some idea of what are good signs for that person, good ascendance. Then we have this Panchanga. Now this Panchanga analysis is for the particular time that we're looking at, which just happens to be where this is where it's indicated by this vertical line. Here is the time and here is the date. So this vertical line is critical because we can just grab hold of it like this with a mouse and we can move it around. So, for example, we see, okay, this looks good, but then, you know, it's around the full moon, just after the full moon, but everything else is green. Or we could go just before that, it's the full moon day, and we see it's 100% green. So, what we're looking for is more green, basically. Now, this Panchanga graph has some very important uh, elements to it. There are things that everybody knows about the viral solar day as the weekday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, like that. Then there's the lunar day. There are 15 lunar days in the waxing and 15 lunar days in the waning cycle of the moon. Then they're called the titties. That's why the T. Then there's a half lunar days or Karana, which is more for career purposes. And there's really only one Karana that's considered to be negative. And then there's the nakshatra. Now, for any particular type of uh, project, like setting off on a, a trip, then there are certain nakshatras that are considered to be good. So they come out green. And the other nakshatras come out red. That's how it works. We can't say that starting on the red day is not uh, completely uh, ruled out. It's just that from the point of view of the traditional Jyotish knowledge, the green days are better, we can say. Then the yogas, that sun plus moon, 
and some yogas are good, some yogas are not so good. Then we have the star quality or the Tarabala. Now, if it's the day of your birth moon, this Tarabala is based on the natal chart. So if it's the birth moon or it's trines, then it gets an orange. For women it's good, for men it's not necessarily recommended. That's the traditional idea. But there are just three stars out of the nine in each cycle of nine which are considered challenging. It's just there's a more intense energy of transformation on those days. So if you want stability, maybe you don't pick these days. Go for these green days. So this is the idea. This is the main one that is specifically with reference to the natal chart. Then this is the waxing and waning, S for Shukla Paksha and K for Krishna Paksha. And then we have this, the yogas. I put success because just to make sure everyone understands how important it is. Now this is a vastly increased part of the version 10 that now large numbers of these yogas, what I call yogas of time, have been included and some of them are positive yogas and a few of them are not so positive. So occasionally you will see red, uh, green is good and orange is okay. So this is the, uh, the idea with these Vara, Titi, Nakshatra yogas. So that's a very important part and here it's shown with the color coding and down here in this Panchangra and Yogi table it's actually telling us which yogas are applicable. This is a new feature in version 10. So on this day we have Shubha Yoga, that means auspicious, and we have Siddha Yoga which means success. So this is, this is really good. So I consider that very important. And then it's always good to have the chart for the uh, for this time here because this is the time I'm looking at. I'm saying okay we're going to do something on this day. So I'm looking at the chart and I'm looking at things like what is the moon doing. So we say moon is in Capricorn, nothing wrong with that but the moon being with Saturn is not particularly desirable. So for certain things, certain purposes like marriage for example, one is not going to pick this day. So you, you look for a good day in the Mohotograph, you check up the transit chart to see that there's nothing too frightening in there, some good things preferably. And then we should zoom in. So we zoom in by clicking, you see this thing with the brackets either, either side, it means if I click on this side you're zooming in, if you click on this side you're zooming out. So we zoom in. And it cycles. So this is the week. So now we're seeing at the bottom an extra thing has been added which is the horrors. So you know during the course of a day there are 24 horrors and there are two systems of horrors. One is one hour each horror and the other is takes into account sunset. So 12 horrors from sunrise to sunset, 12 horrors from sunset to sunrise. So Normally that second scheme, which we call the Yama scheme, is preferred. But it's an option, like you click somewhere and then if you type in horror, you'll see global option, daily horror length uses sunset, Yama horror. But there's this option, Kala horror. So you choose what you prefer. But for normal circumstances, we're preferring the Yama. To change the purpose of the Mahorta graph, just click on it and then click on the, the thing we've selected here. It has a check mark. This is just an option. So then we'll get a list. So if we wanted to do marriage or, you know, all sorts of different things, we'll just select it here and click OK. So if you're looking at one day or one week you'll get this extra feature of the Horus and in the one day you can see the name of the Hora, the planet and its starting time. So we don't want to really pick Shani Hora, Saturn Hora usually. 
So we could go to Moon Horror. You see, as you move this, you'll notice the factors in the Panchanga table and the Rashi graph changing. So suppose we decide we prefer Jupiter Horror to Moon Horror. You'll notice the Ascendant has moved from Libra to Scorpio, and Scorpio is really better because aspected by Jupiter. All these planets are well placed. It's pretty good except for this Moon Saturn issue. So this is how you can quickly zoom in on a good time for the person. So there are different ways of moving around. If you drag the line all the way to the end, it'll jump to the next day. See it's come to here. We have the time change bar. This button will give you that or you can get it from the menus. Or control J. And this lets us move between one second and one year. It's very convenient. And it includes these choices of one Navamsha and one Rashi. So these are extremely useful because, you know, the length of rising time of different signs is different. So if we just want to know that we're stepping through the different ascendants, all we have to do is click this button. I think this is pretty much unique to my software. So that's very convenient. Other ways of changing the time would be here you see this which gives us detail from one second. There's all these handy buttons and we can go all the way up to actually 40 years here. We can enter exactly the amount we want to step through. And once we've set that up then these buttons here can be used. The run buttons will keep on adding. So the thing is automated. You know, you can flow through or run through time at the particular speed that you've selected, or you can step by step, one click, one step like that, backwards and forwards. You can also control this using this time space change menu, which has handy shortcuts listed here for things like running the time back, stepping the time back, stepping the time forward or running the time forward, the same as the buttons on the screen. You can speed up the running or the slow down the running. This can be fabulous actually, especially for studying transits. And then you can change the increment on the fly. All of these things work on the fly. So you have shortcuts. Um, this is very handy. You can also go to this chart. This is the transit chart. We can go there and we can simply change the date and time in the normal way. So that's very convenient. One neat feature of this mortograph, which is new to version 10, is this switch. You see these brackets, inverted brackets, we could say. So what this means is that you put your, uh, put the line close to some event like the change of change or say you're changing from Saturn to Jupiter Horus. So you put your line fairly close to the change, you click here and it will just move straight on to the point of the change. In other words you're getting going to get a chart for the moment that that particular phenomenon starts. So you can use this for anything, you know, ingresses, uh, dashes, um, Horus, uh, any, anything you can see in a mortograph, which is a tremendous range of things, uh, you can immediately get the sort of starting chart just with one click. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's vast really. Good, well I hope you enjoyed this and in future videos we'll look more into the mortographs. Thank you very much. Please subscribe.